We left off yesterday in the book of Revelation chapter 3, right in the middle of the message to the church at Sardis. Uh, this is a church that uh, the Lord said uh, had a reputation for being alive, but the Lord's uh, evaluation was that they were dead. Uh, and so He is trying to wake them up. He's calling them to wake up and to change. And so we've looked at all of that. Now we're going to look at, uh, at the ending of this particular message as he get, talks about the reward that would be theirs if they heed what he has to say. So we pick it up at uh, verse 5 when he says, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments. There are three different rewards given to those who overcome. So the first thing we have to do is to determine what is an overcomer. Uh, there are those who look at words like this in Scripture and think this is an elite group of Christians. These are the ones that have overcome, who have become uh, if famous or powerful or useful or super Christians in some form or the other. Uh, and that is not the way the word is used in the Bible. And it's not the way it's being used here. As we go forward, we see that the overcomers are true believers. So at the church at, Smart, at uh, Sardis, like all churches, I suppose, there was a mixed bag of people. There were people there that truly knew Christ and truly loved him. He had already mentioned those people uh, in an earlier verse. But uh, there's also some there that uh, are going through the motions. They're not truly saved. They, they profess something, but they don't live it. And, and he recognizes that some of them do not really know Christ. Perhaps he doesn't know. Uh, Jesus would know, of course, but John wouldn't know necessarily who is truly a believer and who's not. And he doesn't try to distinguish that here except to say those that overcome. Those that have overcome sin because of the power of Christ, the blood of Christ, who has died for our sins, that person will be the overcomer. And so that's who he's talking about here, the believers in the church uh, at, at, at Sardis. Uh, then he goes on to say, those that overcome will be clothed in white garments. Well, uh, interesting thing here, white garments could imply a number of things. Uh, often at, uh, at victory celebrations in ancient times, they wore white. Uh, also at festivals, when people were uh, coming to a, a fancy party of some kind, some, some ball for the uh, king, they would wear a very white clothing. And then, uh, more often than not, the word white in this regard speaks of purity, that they would have their sins forgiven, uh, completely wiped out, and they would have uh, white garments in that sense, whiter than snow, as we see in Isaiah. Well, that's probably, that last one is probably what he has in mind here. The overcomers will be people who, who will be dressed in this more metaphorical sense in white. They will be purified. Their sins will be forgiven. And then secondly, we find that, that he says, I will not erase their name for the book of life. Now, that's where I want to camp out for just a moment. What is he talking about? the book of life, and having their name not erased. Uh, the book of life comes up several times in the book of Revelation. Uh, I want to turn to a couple other passages. 17 uh, verse 8 is one that I would look at with you. 17 8 says this, The beast that you saw was not and uh, was and is not and is about to come up from the abyss and go to destruction. And those who dwell on the earth will wonder whose name has not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast. So now we have the book of life once again. And uh, then if we want to go over to chapter 20, at the great white throne judgment, the judgment of the unbelievers, we find the, the book of life once again showing up, chapter 20 and verse uh, 14 and 15. And death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death the lake of fire, and if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. So this book of life, or the Lamb's book of life, is the registry of all believers, all those who know Jesus Christ as Savior. If your name is not in the Lamb's book of life at the great white throne judgment, then you will su suffer eternal uh, destruction away from the presence of God forever and ever. And uh, you don't want to be in that situation, obviously. The question that uh, comes up here then is, when do we get our name put in the Lamb's Book of Life? Uh, two major positions. One is that on the moment of conversion, when you really place your faith in Christ, your name is written down in this Book of Life. Uh, another view is that uh, all people have their name written in the Book of Life uh, from the very beginning of their birth, or perhaps even before that. And, uh, and our name is, is erased at death if, in fact, we do not come to Christ. Uh, it's really hard to say for sure which of these is true. 
Uh, either way, we do know that uh, our names will be in the book of life at the end of time if we know Jesus Christ is our Savior. And we will be rewarded with white garments and uh, confession before the Father as we see here. If your name is not in the Lamb's book of life, then you will suffer eternal damnation. We go back to our passage very quickly. One more reward, and I will confess his name before the Father and before his angels. All those who know Christ, all those who are in the Lamb's book of life, will be confessed before the Father. Uh, our name will be spoken before him. What a reward uh, given to us who know Christ. But our reward is based purely on the gift that Jesus Christ gives us because of his dying for us as, as our Savior. And that ought to give us a wonderful day in the Lord if our name is truly in the Lamb's Book of Life. I hope yours is. If it's not, please give us a call sometimes. We'd like, we sure would like to talk to you about that and tell you how you can know that your name is eternally written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We will see you next time. <laughs>